Hi, CWTS students. This will be our lecture about first aid. First aid is the initial assistance or treatment given to a casualty for any injury or sudden illness before the arrival of an ambulance, doctor, or other qualified personnel. It aims to preserve life, prevent the casualty's condition from becoming worse, and promote recovery. The responsibilities as a first aider are, assess the situation quickly and safely and summon appropriate help. Protect casualties and others at the scene from possible danger. To identify, as far as possible, the nature of illness or injury affecting casualty. And to give each casualty early and appropriate treatment, treating the most serious condition first. The responsibilities of a first aider are, to arrange for the casualty's removal to hospital or into the care of a doctor. To remain with a casualty until appropriate care is available. And to report your observations to those taking care of the casualty, and to give further assistance if required. The following are the priority of casualties. Save the conscious casualties before the unconscious ones as they have a higher chance of recovery. Save the young before the old. Do not jeopardize your own life while rendering first aid. In the event of immediate danger, get out of sight immediately. Remember, one of your aims is to preserve life, and not endanger your own in the process of rendering first aid. Casualties should always be treated in the order of priority, usually given by the three B's, breathing, bleeding, bones. Here are the recovery positions. For people who are unconscious, or semi-conscious, but are still breathing. If there are spinal or neck injuries, do not attempt to place the casualty in the recovery position. Note, leaving the victim in this position for long periods may cause them to experience nerve compression. Step 1. Kneel next to the person. Place the arm closest to you straight out from the body. Position the forearm with the back of the hand against the near cheek. Step 2. Grab and bend the person's far knee. Step 3. Protecting the head with one hand, gently roll the person toward you by pulling the far knee over and to the ground. Step 4. Tilt the head up slightly so that the airway is open. Make sure that the hand is under the cheek. Place a blanket or coat over the person, unless he or she has a heat illness or fever, and stay close until help arrives. Hyperventilation, also known as excessive breathing, causes a reduction of carbon dioxide concentration, below normal, of the blood. The following are its symptoms. Unnaturally fast, deep breathing. Attention-seeking behaviors. Dizziness, faintness, trembling, or marked tingling in hands, feet and lips. Headache. Chest pain. Slurred speech. Cramps in the hands and feet. Causes are stress or anxiety. Consequence of lung diseases, head injuries or stroke. The following are treatment of hyperventilation. When speaking to casualty, be firm but kind. If possible, lead the casualty to a quiet place where he may be better able to regain control of his breathing. Let him rebreathe his own exhaled air from a paper bag. Paper bag is preferred over plastic bag as plastic bag may cause the casualty to suffocate. Fainting is a brief loss of consciousness that is caused by a temporary reduction of blood flow to the brain. The symptoms are, a brief loss of consciousness causing the casualty to fall to the floor. A slow pulse. Pale, cold skin and sweating. The causes are, taking in too little food and fluids, dehydration, low blood pressure, lack of sleep, overexhaustion. You can treat fainting by the following measures. Lay casualty down, and slightly elevate legs. Make sure she has plenty of fresh air. As she recovers, reassure her and help her sit up gradually. Look for and treat any injury that has been sustained through falling. Shock occurs when the circulatory system fails, and insufficient oxygen reaches the tissues. If the condition is not treated quickly, vital organs can fail, ultimately causing death. Shock is made worse by fear and pain. The symptoms are 
clammy skin, cool, pale and damp. Restlessness and nervousness. Thirst. Loss of blood. Confusion. Fast breathing. Nausea or vomiting. Blotched or bluish skin, especially around the mouth and lips. Often perspires freely. May pass out. The following are the causes of shock. Shock can be divided into four types. Hypervolemic shock caused by the loss of blood volume, such as through bleeding, or profound dehydration. Cardiogenic shock is a result of a weakened heart that is unable to pump blood as efficiently as it once did. Commonly occurs after a massive heart attack. Distributive shock is a result of the lack of distribution of blood to the organs. Obstructive shock is results from an obstruction to blood flow at a site other than the heart. The following are the treatment, PELCRN, pronounced Belkrin. Position the casualty on their back. Elevate the legs. Loosen clothing at neck waist or wherever it is binding. Climatize, prevent too hot or too cold. Reassure, keep the casualty calm. Notify medical personnel, help, get a medic. Redness and swelling in injured area are the symptoms of bee or horn and sting. It can be treated by the following measures, remove stinger as fast as possible. Reduce pain and swelling with cold compress. Cramps are painful sensations caused by contraction or overshortening, usually of muscles. Cold or overexertion are possible cause of it. It can be treated by the following measures, stretch the muscle and apply heat or cold, preferably heat. Cramps from lack of salt and water. Stretch the muscle, drink water and increase salt intake. Choking is the mechanical obstruction of the flow of air from the environment into the lungs. The following are the possible causes, introduction of foreign object into airway, which becomes stuck. Respiratory diseases. Compression of airway, for example strangling. The following are the symptoms of choking. Unable to speak or cry out. Face turns blue from lack of oxygen. Victim grabbing at his or her throat. Weak coughing, labored breathing produces high-pitched noise. Unconsciousness. It can be treated by the following measures. Encourage victim to cough. Back slaps, use of hard blows with heel of the hand on the upper back of the victim. Abdominal thrusts. Standing behind the victim and using hands to exert pressure on bottom of the diaphragm, may result in injuries like bruises or fracture of ribs. The following are the types of burns, dry burn, caused by flame, contact with hot objects, friction etc. Scalds, contact with steam and hot fluids. Electrical burn, low voltage current, lightning strike, cold injury. Contact with freezing metals, dry ice, freezing vapors for example liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen. Chemical burn. Industrial chemicals, including inhaled fumes and corrosive gases. Household chemicals, including paint remover, strong acid and alkali, bleach, weed killers etc. Radiation burn. Sunburn over exposure to ultraviolet, UV lamp and exposure to radioactive source first degree burn this involves only the outermost layer of skin and is characterized by redness swelling and tenderness second degree burn any one percent burn affecting layers of the epidermis giving rise to rawness blisters in the presence of a clear fluid can be fatal if it affects over 60 percent of the body third degree burn all the layers of the skin are burned and there may be, be some damage to the nerves, fat tissue and muscles. Skin may look waxy, pale or charred. Purple fluid is observed and no pain is felt by casualty. Urgent medical attention is required. Minor burns or the first degree burns can be treated by the following measures. Rinse the injured part with cold water for at least 10 minutes to stop burning and relieve pain. Gently remove any jewelry, watches, belts or constricting clothing from injured area before it begins to swell. 
cover area with sterile dressing, or any clean, non-fluffy material and bandage loosely in place. Note, cold burns should not be rinsed with cold water and cold water should never be applied to anyone with extensive burns. Severe burns or the second and third degree burns can be treated by the following measures. Lay the casualty down and protect the burned area from contact with the ground if possible. Rinse burn with plenty of cold water for at least 10 minutes or use burn cooling gel. Arrange for casualty to be sent to the hospital. While cooling the burn, watch for signs of difficulty in breathing and be ready to resuscitate if necessary. Remove any rings, watches, belts, shoes or burning clothing from injured area before it begins to swell. Remove burned clothing, unless it is sticking to the burn. Cover dressing with sterile dressing or some other suitable material to prevent infection and germs. This is not necessary if burn is on face. Do not burst any blisters, touch infected area or apply any lotions to the injury as this will retain heat within the burn. Electric shocks or low voltage currents. Break contact of electric source with casualty by switching off mains or meter point, only if it is safe for you to do so. If unable to reach cable, stand on insulating material for example plastic mat, wooden box and push casualties limbs away from source with a broom or stick. Do not touch the person until the power supply is turned off. Be careful in areas that are wet. Dial 911 to summon an ambulance. A fracture is a break or crack in the continuity of the bone. The following are the symptoms pain at or near fractured site, tenderness on gentle pressure, swelling over the fracture site, deformity for example irregularity of bone, angulation or rotation of limb, depression of bone etc. loss of power, signs and symptoms of shock. A dislocation is the displacement of one or more bones at a joint. It usually occurs in the shoulders, elbow, thumb, fingers and the lower jaw. The following are the symptoms, pain at the site of injury, limited movement at joint, deformity, swelling, tenderness. The following are the treatment for fractures and dislocations, support and immobilize the injured limb. Use a splint, if possible, in order to prevent movement of the injured part. Arrange for casualty to be removed to hospital. In doubtful cases, always treat as for a fracture. Do not attempt to replace the bones. A strain is an injury to a muscle in which the muscle fibers do as a result of overstretching. Sprain, to a ligament. The following are the symptoms, localized pain, stiffness, inflammation, bruising. A sprain occurs at a joint where there is tearing or overstretching of the ligaments and tissues. The following are the symptoms, pain at site of injury swelling and later bruising, pain on movement, loss of function. The following are the treatment for sprains, support the joint in most comfortable position. PRICE, protect, rest, ice, compression, elevation, treatment. When a sprained ankle occurs outdoors, do not remove the shoe. If unsure whether there is a fracture, always assume it is one. The foreign bodies and minor wounds can be treated by the following measures, control bleeding by applying firm pressure on either side of the object and by raising wounded part. Cover the wound with gauze to minimize the risk of infection. Pad around the object until you can bandage over it without pressing down. Hold the padding in place while finishing the bandaging. If you cannot pad high enough, bandage around the object. Dressing and Bandaging Guidelines Skin is not sterile. If a dressing slips over the victim's skin while you are trying to position it, discard and use a fresh one. Place the dressing over the wound, don't slide it into place. Use a dressing that is large enough to extend at least one inch beyond the edges of the wound. If body tissue or organs are exposed, cover the wound with a dressing that would not stick such as plastic wrap or moistened gauze. Then secure the dressing with a bandage or adhesive tapes. If bandage is over a joint, 
splint and make a bulky dressing so that the joints remain immobilized. If there is no movement of the wound over the joint, there should be improved healing and reduced scarring. Bandage should fit snugly but should not cut off circulation or cause the victim discomfort. If the area beyond the wound changes color begins to tingle or feel cold or if the wound starts to swell the bandage is too tight and should be loosened. Bandaging techniques depend upon size and location of the wound. Your first aid skill. Materials at hand. Phases of triangular bandage. 1. Cravat face. 2. Semi-cravat face. 3. Open face. Use of triangular bandage. 1. To hold dressing in place. 2. To immobilize or support body part. Transportation of casualty. If you are transporting with stretcher, keep the stretcher level to the ground. Carry the casualty with his feet facing the direction of move. Bring the stretcher to the casualty and not the casualty to the stretcher. The types of stretcher are, wooden stretcher collapsible stretcher with telescopic handle improvised stretcher you can use the following as improvised stretchers rolled blanket blanket with two poles chair method shirts gunny sacks with two poles the figure is an example of an improvised stretcher made from a blanket and two poles here are the emergency methods of moving casualties one man human crutch if the casualty is conscious and able to walk with some assistance. Pick a back. If conscious, lightweight. And able to hold on using arms. Cradle method. If lightweight or, a child. Four method. When pick a back or fireman's life method cannot be used to carry a heavy casualty down the staircase. Fireman's lift. If conscious or unconscious. Lightweight. Double human crutch. If conscious and able to walk with some assistance. Two-handed seat. Unable to walk with assistance. Able to use his arms to support. Three-handed seat. Unable to walk with assistance. With injury on one leg. Able to use his arms to support. The figure shows a casualty lying on his back, a bearer kneels on each side of him at the casualty's hips. Each bearer passes his arms under the casualty's thighs and back, and grasps the other bearer's wrists. The bearers rise, lifting the casualty. Four-handed seat. Unable to walk with assistance. Able to use his arms to support. The figure shows the forehand carry. Each bearer grasps one of his wrists and one of the other bearer's wrists, thus forming a pack saddle. The two bearers lower themselves sufficiently for the casualty to sit on the pack saddle. Then they have the casualty place his arms around their shoulders for support before they rise to an upright position. Fore and aft method. Unconscious. Sustained abdominal injury. Thank you so much for listening. See you on our future lectures.